uh, good day of practice for us today. Got an opportunity to recreate some uh, some moments that we could get a little bit better uh, from this past weekend and able to build off of that and then also prep for a uh, really good team in Utah. So we'll open it up. What type of challenges for the Wolves on the outside? Yeah, uh, I mean, it's obviously dynamic, you know, and um, you know, we're going we're gonna to match up well uh, at times, but you always have to punch in the stories at Good to play for Ray Titan in the opener. Kincaid is under production. How much of a lie on what makes it that kind of a you know, he catches contested plays. You know, plays that are supposed to be 50 50 balls are 50 50 balls with him. He has a big catch radius. And uh, obviously, when he's when they're matched up, you know, uh, they, they find, they'll throw the ball to him even in traffic and he'll still get it. Did you watch last year's Utah games to get the understanding of what took place and maybe kind of some of the frustration from your, your players about how they played last year? Not so much about the frustration piece. We certainly studied those last year, um, and really more so even off in, in off-season prep. You know, because it's a new team and they've had a lot of games this season. Uh, but certainly uh, watched those in the off-season and, and uh, a little bit this week. A lot of those games had some self-inflicted wounds get really back by fine. How important is it just to those pre-snap stuff really control the rhythm you know, and not do too much in your play for your role back? Yeah, I mean, just it's really important. You know, one thing that makes this situation uh, special for us is our fans have an opportunity to make an impact in this game. You know, playing on the road is a lot different than playing at home and vice versa. Um, you know, so be, being that the game's here, I think that's a big benefit for us. But all year, you know, the times that we've struggled, it's been times that we've kind of hurt ourselves. So it's certainly important that we do a good job of avoiding those. A couple of those kind of places as we get a chance to pick offs. What happened to two out of bounds? Yeah, just bad kicks. They're just poor kicks. And, uh, you know, we, we try to recreate that, that same sort of things uh, today. We had a pressure kick. We had some really good kicks today. So got to be consistent. Got to be consistent in the kicking game. Um, didn't do that on Saturday. Hoping to see that this Saturday. And on Sean's return, I realize it's a squib, but because they're from midfield, you wanted to put that into the end zone. Yeah, I mean, the, if you go back and watch it, you don't know that it's going to roll in the end zone. It's a really tough decision as a return, you know. Uh, if you knew it was going to roll in the end zone, you absolutely love for it to roll in the end zone and take a knee. You'd hate it if you waited for it to roll all the way down and then it stops at the one, right? I thought it was a really good kick by them. Um, you'd love it if you were able, you know, uh, Jake was in position to potentially recover that and get some yards. Uh, it took kind of a funny bounce. You know, that was a really, you know, well-executed kick. We know that when they're at midfield, you're going to expect a kick like that. Um, wouldn't be better in that situation. How's the secondary really stepped up and set up to play this week in practice? I mean, they've got a lot to work for last week. Yeah, they just work. You know, they've, just, they've embraced the dark, uh, you know, dark, uh, hard, dirty work, right? That's what it takes. And uh, they've, they've recognized opportunities to, you know, compete and practice, make sure they get really good looks um, so they can go do a better job. What are some of the defensive problems you talk in yeah, you're talking about their offense when they're in the bigger personnel groups. Yeah, what are some of the or, or you talk about that? Yeah, I mean, ultimately, they, they do a great job of running the ball with big people. And the more hats you add to the party, like they do with the tight ends and uh, extra hats that they bring to the core, that's another gap that they just added, right, that they can use to run to. So you have to play gap sound defense. Uh, you have to play with great overlap. You have to play with relentless pursuit. Um, and they do a good job of doing that. What have you made of the Brandon Doyle's this season? Kind of just was productive in the yeah, more, uh, more than anything, I'm proud of Brandon and his leadership. He showed up. He's played through some dings. He's had some, you know, issues here and there. But Brandon shows up consistently to work every single day, even at times when it's, you know, it's tough on him and his body. Um, I know that he would love to have more production at times from a pass rush standpoint. Um, but sometimes those come in groups. They come in, at, you know, at, at times. I, what I'm pleased with is how Brandon works every day and the way that he approaches each day. I feel like you seen their running back like taking out Thomas physically earlier this season and just what makes him just so good. Yeah, I don't know if we have. You know, he, he's different. He's big. He's a big back. He runs hard. He's not going to go down on first contact. This is going to be a knockback tackle game, right? It's really important to run your feet. Um, a lot of contact surface area on these tackles. He's obviously a different one. Get any feedback on the Pac-12 on the woods? Yeah, it was, we, we were told that's not. You know, we got some feedback on some other things in the game that were interesting. Um, but yeah, that was not good. This might be some of your uh, last players game at Autzen Stadium. Um, I know you've only been here for a year and you've had a limited amount of time to spend with the seniors, but have you seen them uh, kind of step up a little bit this week, knowing it will be their last game? Yeah, I think it, you know, this is one of those ones where you finally you feel it and you see it, you know, you kind of wait for this moment all year. And I know this game means a lot to those guys. It means a lot to our team too, to send those guys out on the right foot. Going back to the feedback you got from the Pac-12, you could have shared with any of Yeah, but I'm probably not going to.
one, one that was made a lot of in Seattle this week was Chris's late game, late play. Any response to the outcry over that particular issue? No. Do you have any update on Chase Coda and his potential? Which I guess he's been practicing this week. Um, we'll see you know, how it feels. Talk about managing around uh, guys who are just dinged up since that time of year. What makes it unique if you have to do that in the quarterback position? I'm saying if you have to do that in the quarterback position just in terms of the preparation where obviously for many weeks Ty was absolutely the backup. I'm not saying he's not, but how do you manage around an injury? Yeah, I think you I think you always have prep and you, you have a good feel for what guys are uh, best at. Like we prep, you know, year round for for those situations. That's why you get reps with twos, and why you get reps with threes in development groups uh, throughout the season for situations like that. So we've had guys had to step up all year, um, you know, and always want to be prepared for those moments. Has, has Ty separated as the two, or is Jay still in competition for that spot? For Ty's, yeah, Ty's consistently been that, that right there for us, that guy. And, um, you know, Jay's done a really good job, too. And I think uh, everybody in our team has a lot of confidence in Jay. He throws a really good ball, does a good job. So anybody that's numbers called, I think, will be ready. All right, thanks, coach. Appreciate it.